just uh, throw information around amongst one another. We want to be edified by the workings of our God, that the word of the Lord would be in our lives, that we would be for you, and therefore we commit ourselves into your hands and into your purposes for the glory, honor, and praise of your name. Lead us for your glory, we pray. Amen. Uh, the church is God's place. Uh, the church is where we might say humanity should be on display in its best form in this present age. Pardon? What's wrong? Um, so we're coming to the issue of the uh, uh, men and women in the church. So if we are to be thinking about how the church is the best display of humanity should be, we're looking for the best display of men and women because that's what humanity is made up of. So we're looking at how God has ordered things for us in this age in the church. And the fundamental principle is equal but different. The fundamental principle is equal but different. And we are want to encourage tonight that we all have the deepest respect for one another in all of our different, different roles in the church. We all have a warm interest in the welfare of each other in the church. So what drives us as regards to our understanding of the role of men and women in the church? Well, where are we going to go to? We are going to go to the Bible. The Bible. Yeah, okay. Basic principle, we're going to scripture tonight. So I've got four main headings tonight to deal with. Open to lots of interaction. I'm not going to pretend I'm going to answer all the questions. Uh, I'm going to seek to be faithful to scripture. That may lead to things being a bit... Uh, uncomfortable for us, uh, but that's not the, that, that's, well, the key thing is we're faithful to scripture. So let's go to basic principles. Let's go to Genesis chapter one, where it all started, where men and women started. Uh, and if you could just engage with reading the scripture for, for me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to necessarily pick people, but if you could just start reading when I turn to various passages, so I just want to be in Genesis chapter 1 to start off with. And we're looking at Genesis 1 to 3 for some basic principles. We're looking for basic principles of God ordering men and women. So Genesis 1 uh, verses 26 to 27. My first point is we are created in the image of God. First basic principle created in the image of God. Somebody please read Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 27. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that keeps in the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, made man and female, he created them. So fundamental principle, we are created in the image of God. Which God? The true God, who is one God in three persons. One God in three persons. Plurality in unity. Plurality in unity. Humanity is created in the image of this God, plurality in unity is how we are created. So we are created, what's the plurality for man, for mankind? We're one mankind, what's the plurality? Male and female. So I don't think we necessarily think as much as we should in respect to this issue of being in the image of God, we often think about it uh, as individually, i.e. that we are rational thinking creatures like God. But actually, if you read 20, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it's this, it's this plurality of persons in the unity of oneness. One God, three persons, 
one humanity, male and female, different. Male and female are different. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, are they the same? They're different. Three persons. So that's the first basic principle. Uh, we're created in the image of God. Second basic principle is equality. I'm going to suggest to you, if you just read Genesis chapter 1, you would just read equality. You would just read equality. Male and female are equal. The only hint that you could get of, uh, dare I say, of, a, of, of any leadership issue there is that males mentioned first, but somebody has to be mentioned first anyway. But what the point I'm trying to make is the fundamental principle of God making male and female is equality. That's the, the basic principle. Like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are equal, equal in nature, equal in, who, in essence who they are, so if you read there, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Equality. It's only when you get into Genesis chapter 2 that you start to see the differences, of, uh, uh, see the differences unfolding. But in Genesis chapter 1, uh, it's equality, which is emphasized. So women are not superior to men. Men are not superior to women. We're all equal in essentially who we are. Okay, we'll come on to that in further reference uh, later, God willing. Third point is, but we are different. Third point is, but we are different. Now there's, uh, we are biologically we're obviously uh, different but what I want to think about this is something of the way that the, I, I want to bring this out of the fact of who God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit we were created in the image of God there is a difference in the Godhead the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are not all doing the same thing. The Father is, we might say, ordaining everything. The Son is achieving everything. He comes into this world and he dies on the cross. The Father didn't die on the cross, did he? Did the Father die on the cross? Because the Son dies on the cross. And then we've got the spirit working. He's putting everything into effect today. He's not do doing the work of the, the son, but he's making the son's work effective to salvation. Uh, and so as we start to think about some of these issues of, of, of differences, I'm, I'm really bringing it out from the, from the reality of who God is. Um, so if you... I'll read one or two of these. So no need to turn to them. I'm going to read them. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of a wife is a husband, and the head of Christ is God. Huh? The head of Christ is God. So there's order. There's an authority structure in God. John 16, verse 26. But when the helper comes, whom I send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. There is the, there is the Father and the Son involved in sending the spirits. They, as it were, dare I say carefully, are ordering the Spirit into his work. They're sending the orders. Uh, 1 John 4 verse 9, in this the love of God is made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Uh, 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 and God the Father is sending his son on a mission. He is the one who's giving the orders. Um, so this is, this is something of how God is working. Now I want to bring that right into Genesis chapter 2. And so if we're thinking about us 
being in the image of God, we will be expecting what? We'll be expecting there are different roles here, won't we? And I'm not going to read all of Genesis chapter uh, Genesis chapter two, uh, but I will. Uh, I want to. Uh, let's just get a, a frame for Genesis chapter two. Adam is created first. Adam is given the work to do. He's given the task. He's given the job specification. Look after the garden, till it. He says, don't eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he's on his own. And what does God say? You need a, a helper. That's an interesting word, isn't it? A helper. Uh, God is the helper of Israel, by the way. So it's not an inferiority term. It's a term of role. The woman comes to be two main, two main role, two main different roles for so the women in this context. The woman is the it, it, it is the companion in the work, and the helping in the work, companion to give we might say camaraderie, helper to help in completing the task, and we will see then in um, in. Uh, uh, finally, in Genesis chapter two, coming to the end, the man said, "This is this is this at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man." So the woman comes out of man. Um, so we're thinking about the different roles which are established. The man the leader, the man given the instructions, the man given the task, the woman taken from the man to be the companion and helper of the man, not his servant, not his servant. Okay. So basic principles we're sort of seeking to develop here, which will come into roles in the church. We're created in the image of God, number one. Number two, we are equal. Number three, we have different roles. Number four, covered this to a degree already, uh, but we are, there is an authority structure. I'll go back to what I said, particularly at, uh, at 1 Corinthians 11, but those other scriptures as well are indicated there's authority structure in our God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father sending the Son. The Son submitting to the Father. We'll study that uh, some more. So surprise, surprise, you will see that in God's creation of humanity. It's not a case of inferiority. It's a case of authority ordered properly. So the woman come, the man is first. The woman comes out of the man. Go to the end of Genesis chapter Chapter 2, therefore the man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his life, wife were not both naked and were not ashamed. Um, so the, the man leaves his father and mother to establish a new household. He is the head of that household, uh, and the woman comes to be his helper and his uh, companion. And uh, just to notice as well, Genesis 3, verse 20, it says, The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of the living. So the, the man expressing his authority in the naming of his wife. He named the animals, and now he's naming his wife. So we have authority established. Not willy-nilly, but an authority is established on the basis of who God is. We're created in the image of God. It's unity, difference, authority. And finally, as we're thinking about these basic principles, right at the beginning of the Bible, I want to finally think about difficulty. Difficulty, alas, Genesis 2 is not the end of the story, is it? And Genesis 3, we have the fall, 
And the consequences, one of the consequences of the fall is stated in Genesis in chapter 3 and at verse 16. Genesis in chapter 3, verse 16, to the woman he said, I will surely, mul I will surely multiply you, your pain in childbearing, in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. If you go to the footnote in the uh, in the ESV, it says that for the woman, your desire shall be against your husband's. Uh, and basically, there's two statements there. Friction. Friction. It's it's you, you know there's going to be some difficulty here because we're in the fall. Uh, and, and the women are, uh, there's a resistance, we might say, to the authority structure from the woman's side. And there is a wrong, a wrong kind of rule from the man's side, domineering. A, uh, a, a, so, so those things are, those things are kind of, uh, are, are consequent upon the fall. So that's the basic principles I just wanted to. Everything flows, everything flows as regards to humanity out of who God is because we're created in the image of God. Mm. It's a God issue. Yeah, that's what it wants us to, it wants us to get excited about because uh, it's God's great program. It all flows from him. Okay, that's my baby. So that's the first main point is... Basic principles created in the image of God, equality of value for male and female. That's what Genesis 1 teaches. I don't think you would get difference from Genesis chapter 1, but you get difference from Genesis chapter 2. And then you get authority established, the order of authority. And then finally, sadly, you get difficulty coming in in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. So, uh, anybody want to ask any questions, sir? And it says, you will, your desire will be for your husband. And a lot of them say that. Is that different to contrary? Uh, I'm not expert enough on the verse, Kate, okay, to say uh, the detail. Sorry. I, mean, I, I, mean, I saw, I saw a hand in front of our my old pastor did a sermon on this and what it means is desire for it's not the husband, it's for the position. Oh. So you'll be wanting the position and he'll be domineering and pushing you down. That's as, as, as what you just explained earlier. Yeah. It's a friction thing. I think what I, what I want to get is a friction thing. The woman pushing against the man and the man ruling in the wrong way. The dominating sort of starts there. Yeah. Because they, well, the, the, the rule of the man is to be, it is to be Christ like rule. Who is the ultimate man who rules? He's the Christ who loves with self sacrificing devotion. That's true really to leadership, isn't it, man? Self sacrificing devotion is our leadership. Okay. Okay. All right, let's go on to, uh, I quickly just want to go through some history of the scriptures here, and I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to touch down specifically in uh, in passages, but I just want to touch down Abraham. Uh, the, the 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 leadership structure was male, so the patriarchs are all male: Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, uh, the priests. A male, temple servants, a male, prophets, all the main preaching prophets, a male. Uh, there's one or two exceptions, but generally male. The kings, male, except for Athaliah, who was the evil king, evil queen Athaliah, who reigned briefly, trying to uh, destroy the line. And also the apostles. The apostles were all men. Uh, and I just, uh, what I'm trying to do there is, is almost leap from Genesis right through to the New Testament. 
and say, well, it's not as if there's a disconnect in history. It's the flow has always been in God's purpose uh, that man would 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 uh, would have the the leadership position. That's what I'm particularly thinking about. Why did God make Deborah a judge over? Why wouldn't that be man? Because the man failed. That's the big problem. Bela should have stepped up. But the problem with De problem Deborah didn't want to do it really. She was she was. Uh, if you look at Judges chapter five, it's the it's the failure of the man. I think so. So 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 tonight, I I, I want to hit us man a bit. Because if you think of roles in the church, uh, one of the big issues is men stepping up uh, and, and uh, fulfilling their, their role in the church. Okay. So that was, yeah, there's Deborah, there's Holder in uh, 2 Kings 20, oh, 1 Chronicles 34, 35, is it? He was a prophetess. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll come on to uh, roles in the church then. I'm going to come, not specifically, uh, specifically our title tonight, but I did want to come at it this way to get this frame of where, where it is all at with God. So let's turn to 1 Timothy chapter 3 and Titus chapter 1. But let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. And... Uh, One Timothy chapter three and uh, verse uh, one concerning the elders. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Uh, similarly, uh, with regard to the uh, deacons, it says in verse 12, let the deacons each be the husband of one wife. And then skipping over to Titus and chapter 1. <laughs> if anyone is above reproach, the husband of one wife, Titus chapter 1, verse 6. Um, so I'm placing the, the fact that the elder role and the deacon role is stated to be male. The elder role and the deacon role is stated to be male. Okay. So, we, so that shouldn't be a surprise if we're thinking about God's order, going back to Genesis, Genesis 1 and 2. The leadership role in the church is to be male. So let's go to 1 Timothy and chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. So if somebody could read from 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8 through to 15. Verse 8 through to 15. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self control, not with braided hair, with gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet, but Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness of self control. <clears throat> So uh, Timothy is in the uh, church there in uh, Ephesus, and he has been taught, uh, verse uh, 14, 
Uh, verse 15 is uh, the key. Chapter 3, verse 15 is the key verse of 1 Timothy. By delay, you may know how you want ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. So how are we to behave in terms of the activities of the men and the women here, uh, particularly as they read, or we might say they focus in the um, demonstration, our roles in the gathering of the church, perhaps we put it like that. So verse, uh, verse 8, we see the men. I desire men that in every place the men should pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. So the men are to pray out of pure lives. This is the males. It is my, it is my persuasion. I am not saying that the, uh, I am not going to present to you tonight that the, uh, the sisters should not, shouldn't be praying verbally, but I, all things being equal in a prayer meeting, there is something wrong, men, if the sisters are praying more than the men, okay? Uh, men, step up. Amen. You know? You can't, uh, you may take, a, we, we take a position in this church of, of male leadership, uh, but that, that also takes, it has a responsibility on the men to step up and not just to sit and the women, I believe a lot of problems in women regarding these issues, they're just, in churches, the sisters, is they're just frustrated about the men. <laughs> the men don't get going and actually fulfill the responsibility of leading in prayer, fulfilling that, we might say, that uh, headship role, that male leadership role. So the men are to pray, specific, it doesn't say the sisters are to pray, the men are to take the responsibility to pray. And a little background here, I think the main problem with men in, it, 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 the main problem, this is a little bit of a digression, but I'll mention it anyway. The main problem that we may ha men have is that we proud and depend upon ourselves. What are you doing when you're praying? You're saying, I'm depending upon you. <laughs> so men get praying and depending upon God. Uh, if you go, for, this isn't my main theme tonight, but if you carry on then with regard to women, what's the women? What's the problem mainly with women? We might say carefully. Uh, you don't shut up. <laughs> shut up. Well, uh, what can I say? <laughs> women, uh, I'll put it, women are the prettier of the species. Let me put it like that. Uh, women want to display. That's part of the issue here. I think women want to display. And Paul says, no, don't display yourself. Let God be on display. Okay, so men... You got see a lack of fires in prayer. Pardon? I don't see that lack of fires. No, it's not in prayer, but I'm flowing on here in church. The men are to pray, but if you flow on, it's the women are to be are to be careful how they dress, not to show off. But it, it so basically in church, it's not a fashion parade for the women. It's it's your godliness ties in with one Peter chapter three. Yeah. I guess there's a numbers problem as well, isn't it? That generally speaking, in the churches in the UK. You probably get at least twice as many women as men. That's why I said all things been equal, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, but still, I, I, I still, I do want to feel it for us men. Let's not that we should be stepping up. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember visiting one church in in Wimbledon, and uh, hats were obviously the thing for the ladies, and and it was just incredible <laughs> the sheer um, flamboyance. And variety of the hats. Well, yeah, I could be a. It, yeah, it's nothing to do with covering your head. It was to do with look at my hat, <laughs> which I think is part of the problem in one in, in one Peter in one Timothy chapter two, mm. and and the Lord as it goes into one Peter chapter three as well. The Lord says to the to the sisters, "Don't be thinking like the world, which is to show yourself off. Be thinking that be dressing so that God is shown off." I think is something of the of the, the, the background there but we come then on to uh, the issue then of the the preaching and the teaching and uh, let a woman learn quietly and probably there is some uh, connection here 
it, it's the woman is to be is 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 to show godliness. The woman is to be, in one sense, not on display. It's the man who are to take take the authority, take the leadership. Now, this is, doesn't mean everybody, every man is gifted for this, uh, but it is the role that is for the man. If you've seen it in one Timothy chapter three about the uh, Titus one about the elder and the deacon. Well, this cross references uh, to that, and so. Uh, Verse 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over the man. Rather, she is to be quiet. So I'm taking the, the preaching role, uh, the leading role, and the pastor elder role is to be male. Okay. Yeah. The male has the authority. The male brings the word, which is the word of authority from God. Yeah? So we're thinking about roles in the church. <laughs> we're thinking specifically here about the men taking the lead uh, to be the preachers. And so uh, be praying for these men and be thinking about whether you are these men. Cross-reference, Ephesians, over uh, prop reference, chapter 3, elders and deacons as well. I think your foundation for us in Genesis is really helpful, because you see, as you pointed out, there's different levels of responsibility. Yeah. Um, although there is equality, there's diversity of responsibility. Yeah. Mm. And therefore, with, with men and women in this, but it's, it's taking up our responsibilities, isn't it? It is, but yeah. also the women helping the men to fulfill those responsibilities rather yeah. than trying to take them over. Yep. Yep. It's that harmony. I think that what we help that and stuff, I think kind of the way you read it in the West, the way people are being educated now, it looks like a subordinate role where really it's like a company, as you said, and it's like you've got it's more she's more in, in like an infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, she's behind the community. You know, she, she's the way that the, the, the next uh, women, the next mothers, uh, she provides the feminines and the, the boys as, as they're growing. Um, the, so I see it more as a support infrastructure. She mm -hmm. creates the home and, and around. But yeah. Um, it's, you know, to explain, it's, it's just, but I see it more as when it's a helper, um, when I read into it, I just get up. My opinion is that. Or my thoughts on it is it's cheap. It's more important. It's help, help is a more important word than it is now. It yeah, well, as I said, the, yeah. the Lord's the helper of Israel. Yes, exactly. And, and yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Uh, that brings me really to, to I just want to dwell here. Uh, there's a whole range of things. There's a massive amount of can, can, can come up this, but a uh, woman, the, the sphere of the woman, then, and it's a difficult verse, 1 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 15, and I would question people when they say that it's a straightforward verse. It is a difficult verse. I always wonder whether it's the most difficult verse in the, in the New Testament to understand. But my, my basic, I, I think I want to bounce off a little bit what Adrian said is, the woman is, 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 is created to care. Uh, women are better at feelings than men, aren't they? We men, we, uh, I, I want to do a massive generalization here. We men, we are, we are rational. Uh, we, are, we are sort of big picture. We are programs. Women are people. Women are relationships. Women are caring. Women are tender. Massive generalizations. But God has made us beautifully, harmoniously to be uh, together. And I think that's something in verse 15 that the, it's, it's not specifically that, that you, you only get fulfillment if you, if you actually uh, are a mother. I think it's that whole realm of child rearing and everything that comes out of that image of the, 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 the care, the, the, uh, um, the loving interest in people. It goes something like this, I think, verse 15. Yet she will experience her salvation in the realm of child caring and they will know that in its fullness when they're carrying on in a godly way in their lives 
with faith and love and holiness and self-control. And so the, 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 the women, women flourish in this realm of caring and tenderness. And I think society, particularly with regard to uh, the mother role, even specifically the mother role of bringing up children, society is in a sense depriving women. You, you know, it, it's, uh, to me, okay, throw something at me if you want to. To me, it's, it's, it's just given with all the political parties that they've got to really, everybody's going, almost competing. Who can give the most to childcare? Childcare. And you think, please. This is an attack on women. Yeah. You look at everything from equality 10 years ago, that now has actually, if you look at who's been attacked in sport, it's women. In That's right. Women. Yeah. It's the women who, 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 who are. Yeah. So, um, Okay, so this, the, the, this realm of flourishing. Now, I want to deal with teaching here because I want, in a sense, I want us all to be teachers. I believe that the preaching role is male. Well, let, let's flick over to Titus 2. Let's flick over to Titus 2. One of the pr problems of, tit of, Christ of churches as well is that Titus 2 is not done enough, is it? So let's read of Titus 2. And I want to challenge particularly you older sisters. Verse 3. Older women likewise are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working to at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. Older sisters in the church are making a call to you. Churches are impoverished because the older sisters are not taking up their responsibility to teach the younger sisters and teach them. Teach them in the ways of God. Teach them in the ways of family. Teach them in the ways of marriage. Older sisters, take up your responsibility in that respect. But the point I want to be making is, is, the, uh, is, the, is, the, is the, that we all need to be teaching one another I need to be taught by you. I need to be instructed. And it's beautiful when we can all be learning together and teaching one another. Yeah, teaching our children, but teaching one another. Ladies teaching ladies, men teaching men, one-to-one, -one, small groups. Uh, for me, I, I think the scripture gives us the basic principles. Uh, perhaps we might say there's some gray areas where these things, how these things are worked out. But the basic principles stand, and um, uh, but within those principles, we want to be flourishing to fulfill everything that God calls us to. Let me, let me, I, 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 let me say this: I want everybody to be flourishing in this church. I want everybody to be growing in grace and in the knowledge of the Savior. I want us all to be exercising our gifts fully. I want you to tell me if you think you're being. You're being hindered spiritually. Your gift is being quenched in this church. Then I'm concerned and I want to know about it because I'm convinced of the principles of scripture, but I'm also convinced of an absolute desire to see everybody flourish and fulfill their ministry in this church. So, yeah, um, I, I, I'm not going to go to Proverbs 31, but Proverbs 31. Interesting, isn't it? Got all this stuff about wisdom in Proverbs 31. And what does he finish with? Finish with, yeah, a big man who does it. Got a woman. <laughs> a woman who's a woman who's ruling the world by creating a home. She's ruling the world by creating a home. But she is busy outside the home as well. I mean to say she's just home base. Okay, so Proverbs 31. Uh, finally, as regards, I want to, I mean, this is, uh, it, 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 there's so much more here, but um, Priscilla, Priscilla and Aquila, you can just want to flip to it or just want to listen to it. Uh, Acts 18, verse 26, Apollos, big man, mightily gifted young man, making big progress uh, for God. Uh, they hear him preach, verse 26, Acts 18. He began to preach, this is Apollos, boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. 
And sometimes we've degenerated to some kind of caricature of this, whereby if the instruction has been given by the husband and wife, it's the man who's speaking and the woman is silent. Here, I, I can only see that Aquila and Priscilla beautifully working together to instruct Apollos. Priscilla was there giving the instruction as well in that whole context, wanting to help see Ap Apollos mature in Christ. She is the one who's named first. She's named first as well. Aquila and Priscilla made six times in the Bible. Aquila first three times, Priscilla first three times. So, again, uh, what I was going to say, I just want to see, yeah, we want to see these things flourishing. Yeah, I, I want to see, uh, it is important, it is so important that you sisters in this church are theologically well equipped. You should, be, you should be knowledgeable in the Bible. This church should be teaching you the Bible. And you should be strong as in the theology like the men of the church need to be strong in theology. Um, it, I've said this many times, but always great to be when you go along to, to some meeting and you say, and, and you get some refreshments and we thank the sisters for making the tea. As if the sisters can only make the tea. That's there. They, yeah. Okay, we thank the Lord for everybody making good things. Sorry. With that consider an Aquilia. Yeah. Um, example. One of the things I really value in with many uh, is that on Wednesday evenings when we have a Bible study, that everybody takes part. Yeah. That we all have an equal right, men, women, young or old, we all have an equal right to ask and to answer. And to build one another up and to teach one another in that way. Yeah. I think that's really excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to come back to, uh, I want to come on now. Please pick me up. Uh, but I want to, this is my final point, And this is rejection. This is rejection. Uh, why do people reject this teaching today? And they do reject it. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put the two terms in here. They're, they uh, originate, I think, uh, with the Council of, of Biblical Manhood and Womanhood in uh, America, probably about 30 years ago. John Piper, Wayne Grudem, two main people behind all that, uh, 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 that sort of movement that took place. Complementarianism is we are equal but different. Okay, We complement each other. Egalitarian is, egalitarianism is we are equal and there's no difference in our roles, okay? But we, so if you want, we are a complementary in church, okay? So let's think about those who reject uh, these statements, those who reject this, uh, the, the principles that I've uh, stated. Why do they reject these principles? Uh, I'm going to put four reasons here, four reasons why people reject. Uh, in the church, this isn't specifically in the church, they ignore scripture. They ignore scripture. They, they, they're driven by society and not by scripture. So they come to these issues and say, well, this is how it's going in society. We follow society and not scripture. The second thing is that they, are, they impose on scripture. They impose on scripture. So they come with a preconceived idea as regards to the roles of men and women in the church. They want men, they want women to be pastors, vicars, or whatever terminology used. And so they just come to the scripture and they'll impose it on scripture. Third thing is that people are casual with scripture. And the key verse here, which, uh, which is the most open to abuse, is Galatians chapter 3 and verse 28. It says, uh, neither male nor female, nor Jew nor Gentile, now on the free. Uh, and that's got nothing to do with roles in the church. That is all to do with Genesis 1. Equal in redemption. If Genesis 1 is equal in creation, Genesis 3.28, Galatians 3.28, the whole context is about salvation uh, and Paul unfolding his argument with regard to how we are all brought in to acceptance in Christ Jesus, the promised seed coming down from Abraham, and we're all heirs of Abraham accepted 
And so there's, we're all 100% accepted equally tonight here. If you're Christian, you're Christian, been a Christian for 10 minutes, whether you've been a Christian for 50 years, you're as accepted as anybody else because we're accepted in Christ. Uh, so Galatians 3 verse 28 has got nothing to do with roles in the church. It's all to do with our acceptance with God, equally accepted. And the fourth way, the, uh, the fourth way is people manipulate scripture. People manipulate scripture. And if you want to go and spend some time about uh, seeing somebody who does this, it's N.T. Wright, who's probably got uh, 10 brains more than me, but uh, how he gets around the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 2 is a is, is, is some gymnastics to behold. Uh, and you go, you go delving here, there, and everywhere to prove that it, I think it's something to do with the temple of Artemis, that therefore in Ephesus there was this statement made, and you think there is, God has not given his word to confuse us or make us to have to go into all kinds of intricacies. The scripture, there is, long word coming, sorry, there is the perspicuity of scripture, that it is clear God hasn't given his word to confuse us. Uh, so uh, N.T. Wright would be one who would go through all kinds of gymnastics to try and prove that men, uh, that women should be, can be pastors in the church. And uh, yeah, so those are the four, uh, uh, four reasons, really, I'm saying why in the church you end up with women pastors uh, women leaders, uh, ignoring scripture, imposing upon scripture, casual with scripture, and uh, manipulating scripture. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Mark's got a point there. Uh, I think he's got a point. There are, there are some mightily gifted ladies and knowledgeable ladies to, uh, to come to mind immediately at present uh, you may know the names Nancy Guthrie, Rebecca, Rebecca McLaughlin, you know, turning out books. And if you, you hear them speak, they speak very well. And you think, this is what you think about them. Yeah. And so it's not, say it again, Mark, is only what you phrase. Yeah, that's right. So principle always comes first. But God, so therefore God fits the gift within the principle. So both uh, Nancy Guthrie and Rebecca McLaughlin. Uh, would be fitting within this, we might say, complementarian arrangement. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have to come, we have to get our scripture right first, isn't it? Scripture right first, and then we then we can uh, then we can work from that. I don't know these words. Uh, is it that they are in the role of guest speakers? Or is it that they're in the role of being a uh, principal of a Bible college or um, a pastor of a church? Uh, well, they churn out books and uh, do women's conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, for women? Or for women, women yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, What, what do you mean churn out books? Which well, a bit of a funny... Well, no, but they, they write health, wholesome, valuable books, oh, for okay. example, yeah. Yeah, they're very able theologically, yeah. Oh, are you commending that? No, I'm not quite sure what the point is. Uh, uh, my, my point was, um, people would probably think they're, they're so gifted in speaking, they could be preaching. It's like Sharon James. I'd say Sharon James is a British example. You know, you get a mega brain. Uh, and if you hear her speak, very good. But again, she... Uh, <coughs> well, her husband's... Husband's in charge of where you used to be, Andrew. London Seminary. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but yeah, but again, fitting within the complementarian frame. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I just. Especially as well, they see that the Bible teaches that women shut up as well. I think I, I, there was one young atheist who worked in a coffee shop in the Southern House County and constantly, it was somebody who. Modern society perceives the Bible as archaic okay, against people very loudly saying, Hey, Adrian, look, you, you think women should stay at home. 
like so I had to answer and there'd be like a bunch of young businessmen there, or they'd be uh, or you're anti-gay, you're you hate gays, don't you? And so that's the attack he had on me. And on other Christians as well okay. I, I, I went in because I, I, I was all the things he hit me with, I was able to answer in a satisfactory manner. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the problem is they, they, the, the picture of women is that they are, by helpers, they are under, they're not equal, and they are under, and they are just a space violence at home, which is what man turned into with oppressive people. Yeah, which is the oppression. Yeah. And let's not deny that there is much of that that's happened through history and still happens today. Yeah. The manhood is conveyed as being a macho uh, woman. Dominant, you dominate. If you're a real man, you dominate women. Uh, I mean, there's a whole lot of things here because, the, yeah, I don't want to go down all the all the stuff. Uh, but there is a there is a, 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 a men are lost in many ways. Uh, but we want wholesome manhood, not some fake manhood. Can I just? I want to flag up here two things. Two. You may say, well, okay, you've, uh, I've heard what you say, Philip, uh, but, it, it, you know, if these things happen in the church, well, we've still got the gospel, uh, and there's still the, the gospel is still preached. I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to, 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 somebody said that Francis Schaeffer, the great, uh, great uh, theologian philosopher, saw this, saw the men and women issue as a key issue. Because when you lose this issue, you lose the authority of Scripture. So two points here. I want to go back to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And there is, there's two things here I want to mention as regards to what can go wrong when we lose this issue. Okay, Because when it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2 in verses, 4, uh, verses 12 and uh, verses 13 and 14, why does a woman not take the leadership responsibility? It says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to be quiet. For Adam was first born, then Eve. Okay, it's because Adam is the first one. He's the leader. He's the leader one. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. I take it because men, uh, because, because women are more emotional. Women are more people people. They're, 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 and it is interesting that Satan went for the woman in Genesis chapter 3. The women are more vulnerable to false teaching. I'm saying that as a generality. You may resent that. You may resist that. But I think women are more vulnerable because, of, because they're more people person and they're less likely to want to offend people. Whereas men function more in the rational. They fun function more in, in the... Uh, it, it, less in the emotional and, the, and in the personal. Okay, so I think if women start to become pastors of the church, the church is more vulnerable to false teaching. Okay, second thing I want to say is when you start dealing with scripture, so as you can come to a conclusion that you can have lady pastors and lady preachers, basically you have developed, long word here, sorry, a hermeneutic, a way of dealing with scripture which opens you up to everything and anything. And not too far down the road, John 14 verse 6 can be something that John 14 verse 6 isn't. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Okay? Let me say that again. If you start dealing with scripture so as to conclude that the basic statements of scripture, we thought of the themes tonight, we thought of certain statements like 1 Timothy uh, chapter 2 and verse 12. If you lose, if you deal with scripture, so as you won't follow those basic statements, then you can come to scripture and start uh, and start losing anything and everything. And you'll have soon lost the gospel because you've developed a principle of dealing with scripture, which will lead you into all kinds of problems. So, in a sense, it's not just the male-female issue. I would probably say if you lose it on this issue, probably, uh, yeah, I, I won't use a statistic, but you, you, you're going to lose the rest. Can I just have to support that? That's exactly what's happening in America. Because of the feeling side of it, a lot of the new age 
even some witchcraft is moving into mm. I think it's a quarter of the churches in America. Yeah. So yeah. That's right. Witchcraft, That's right. witchcraft is feminine. It's, it, uh, it, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's a very feminine thing that's led to the new age. You know, you are yourself, you can be anything you want to be. Yeah, yeah. It's set. Yes, that's it. Well, Satan's Satan knows what he's doing, doesn't he? He knew what he was doing in Genesis chapter three. He knows what he's doing today. Final thing, Rick Warren. Probably most people know Rick Warren. Um, you may know that Rick Warren in the last six weeks or so has come and said, I, I, I no longer believe that pastors should just be men. And, uh, and he's, there's an interview with him. Uh, I'll leave that. And I just want to quote his three reasons why. And, he, and he's very, he, he says, uh, it's interesting, he said, I haven't come to this conclusion because of what society says. I've come to this conclusion because of what scripture says. Okay. So let's long to, let's, let, uh, the, the three reasons that Rick Warren gives. Uh, the first one is witnesses to the resurrection. They were women, therefore we should have pastors in the church today. And I say, hmm? not at all. That was just, that's a private thing. It wasn't anything to do with the public arrangement of church. Um, oh, there's an interesting study in that whole realm, isn't it? The women outshone the men so much in the events surrounding the crucifixion and resurrection of the Lord, didn't they? The women, were, were they were the ones who stayed. They were the ones who were the first to the tomb. But that's just simply God... God trusted them to that role at that time. It's not a public role in the church. So it's the, 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 it's just a false connection. Second one is the, the, the second one is the Great Commission, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything of law, to, uh, uh, teaching them to obey everything of law. I'm with you to the end of the age. And, uh, and he says, well, teaching them. And I'm saying, well, we want everybody teaching. I've already said that, but it's got nothing to do with the role of the pastor. It's the fact that, sisters, I want you teaching. <laughs> I want you all teaching. But it's not the pastoral role there in Matthew 20, uh, 28, 20. It's the, it's, the, it's the get the word out. Go and teach people the word. Uh, and finally, um, I, I, it's Acts chapter 2. And I'm not quite sure how he gets it in Acts chapter 2, but he says the women were involved in Acts chapter 2 in that initial um, outpouring of the Spirit. Well, praise God that the women are involved, but I don't think uh, the man who preached the word there was the Apostle Peter. Um, so those are, that's, uh, that was Rick Warren's biblical case for rejecting male-only pastors, a case which I think is easily... Uh, easily dismissed. Yeah, but only the one that's in the process of uniting the Islamic Church with yeah. Christ. Yeah. yeah. Christ is on the way. He's born Jesse Money and Sponsor. Who, hey, Rick Warren? Yeah. Okay, yes. I didn't know that side of that. Yeah. yeah. The Catholic Church that they built in the Middle East, right here, yeah, he's involved in bringing Christianity and doing inverted commas yeah. into the. Basically, oh, Jesus isn't the only way according to him. Yeah. Well, yeah, so that's ties in with what I was just saying. It's just tying me a little bit of what I was saying, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, okay, I, 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 I say that about Rick Warren. Um, I don't want to dwell upon Rick Warren, and no doubt you can find some stuff that's helpful with Rick Warren or whatever. But the fundamental uh, problem is that he's gone in a wrong direction, and there will be. There's consequences of these things. Um, so, so that's the that's what I wanted to bring to you, brothers and sisters. This is the frame. Now we seek to outwork uh, outwork that in our in our arrangements here uh, as as a church. And some of the details, well, we'll disagree on. But I trust we all think, all agree on the fundamental frame of how these things are and how we function as a church. And um, yeah, and I, 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 I did want to, I do want to give us that grand view that this isn't some artificial construct that we might just have for this age. This all flows out of who God is. And we, and, and, it, and if you bring that into 
the context of where we are as a church, we're not just having, we might say, certain roles for men and certain roles for women. When this is operating properly, we're putting God on display. We're putting God on display. Yeah? You know, unity in diversity. Okay? And if it's just functioning beautifully, we're a sense of, well, this is how God functions as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm. By the same method of argument that allows women to take a role that God has not given for them. And you can also argue that men and women should exchange roles sexually as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're all... You're on a snowball which can snowball. Okay, brothers and sisters. Um, well, you know, any final question, observation, perplexity? You haven't thrown anything at me yet. Anybody? Could you distinguish the open plan of prayer? Say, because um, we have it on Sunday morning, uh, say a uh, midweek prayer meeting or home meeting. Um, so open ended to anyone to pray versus the man leading the prayer. Um, I think, I, I, again, grey areas, I would say. So I would say, but particularly when it is from the front. I think it is the, the man who is leading. It's the formal. It's the almost presenting the church. Uh, and, uh, and I think in the normal flow of things, it's the man who should be there, who should be leading. Yeah. Um, other more, perhaps, I don't know whether it's the right word, less formal times. Yeah. You got any thoughts on it? So... Yeah, I'm not going to fall out with churches. I mean, we, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say we we use men to read the scripture here. There are other churches which are complementary and they would use ladies to preach, to read the scripture. Uh, I'm not going to say we'll never have ladies to preach, that lead the scripture on a Sunday morning. Uh, but those are outworkings of the principles, shall I say. Mm. As you've mentioned it specifically, I agree with everything that you said this evening. Um, but I, I also see that the scripture, reading the scriptures um, could be male or female. That's where I'm coming from. I don't see yeah. that reading the Bible um, per se is a statement of personal authority by the reader over those who they're reading. Mm. Um, but because the authority comes from the, what they are reading. They're not making it up as they go along. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Argument, you can say it could be pastors. Not really, no. I'm not saying that at all. No, no, no. But you, somebody can take from that. But I know that argument mm -hmm. in the church of England. But you, you can't use somebody else's wrong argument to. Oh, no, 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 that's the argument. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. that very mm -hmm. honest and really good argument put forward. Mm -hmm. But the Church of England is twisting that. That's what they are. That's what mm -hmm. they put forward. Yeah. If you have them reading the scriptures and the scriptures of the authority, and they can be. Just I think I'm, I think the point I'd mainly want to make is we fund we have these fundamental principles. Churches can outwork them differently with the same fundamental principles. Um, but uh, and we always want to be working these things out. Yeah, but we are standing. <laughs> but we are standing here, <laughs> and we are uh, and, and we're, you know we're not shifting. <laughs> as regards to these fundamental principles. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, next one, it doesn't get any easier. Uh, we're thinking about hell next one. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's not an easy issue to come to, but we, we live in an age uh, where I think we've got to face it and really teach it. Why is there a hell? And do we really believe in a hell? Well, God willing, we'll speak about that subject. Uh, equip next month. Uh, we've got Iranian food tonight. So uh, abundant. enjoy. Abundant. Abundant uh, Iranian food tonight. So enjoy a time together. And uh, be helping one another. 
And if yeah, yeah please, I, I do want to be open if you if you did want to share anything in the group, but want to speak to me personally, please, please do so. Uh, and I'll tell you to speak to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for all of your mercies to us, and uh, we do pray that you would be upon us for good this evening time and uh, give us a good evening and uh, share refreshments. We would enjoy your goodness and grace into our lives and uh, watch over us for good. Into this week, we commit ourselves. May we represent you well. May we be faithful witnesses to the Lord and be for your glory, for your honor, and for your praise as we come to you in the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.